In this video, I will go through the term DevOps. It's a buzzword lately, right? Um, I will explain what it actually means um, on a very beginner level. So it's understandable either if you are a developer or coming from a marketing background and just want to learn what actually DevOps is. I will go through, first of all, we will clarify what DevOps is not. Uh, then we will um, explain what actually the words dev and ops mean and what is uh, what are the developers and what is the operations team. Uh, then we are going to go through the main steps, how it's used and the benefits uh, and uh, uh, drawbacks of actually using DevOps. And we will also go through uh, different tools that are used in combination with DevOps. So first of all, it is actually important to clarify what DevOps is not, because I see a lot of people um, struggling with it. Um, it's, it. It is just a buzzword and um, it is hard to actually understand what it stands for. So when you hear the word DevOps, continuous integration, continuous development, this is actually not a tool. It is not a certain skill set you have. Uh, it is not something you, it, it is not a script you learn. Um, it is a methodology. It is a way how things are done in software development. And it is, not, um, it is not a certain tool you can learn, but rather it is a methodology that is used in software development. Since the word is made out of two words, dev, ops, development and operations, uh, it is important to understand what those two are standing for. So dev as for developers, uh, stands for the team that is actually developing and implementing new features, new code that is um, uh, creating uh, new features for the website or product or whatever. Uh, and the operations team uh, is the team that uh, it's, that is actually pushing those updates, that is um, maintaining the production environment. Uh, that is the team um, when the coding development finishes with a new feature, okay, we, we are done on our part. Now comes the operations team and the operations team needs to uh, pull those changes, um, update it in the production environment so actually it can be used across all customers. So you can imagine that's extremely important for a lot of businesses since uh, the environment is changing very rapidly and businesses need to adapt to ever-changing requirements. So in order to better understand what all of this is about, let's take an example, right? Um, there is a company which uh, provides some type of SaaS, it can be whatever type of service, to its customers. Um, now, customers want a new feature. The management decided, okay, we need to implement this feature. We give the requests to the development team. The development team takes some time to develop the feature, mostly. Uh, it is done in springs that last for about two weeks, right? When those two weeks are over, they pass the code to the operations team. The operations team is now responsible for deploying this code. It is responsible for, um, if you are not really familiar with the term, it is responsible for actually taking the code that the developers have wrote, uploading, to, uploading it to a server and running it there, measuring its performance, uh, scaling it up, scaling it down, depending on the ever-changing requirements, right? So, as you can see, this is quite a large problem because you have two environments. You have a development environment and you have a production environment. For example, you have a, a checkout system and for the checkout system in the development environment, you're maybe using uh, fake credit cards, uh, which are using a different API code than in a production environment, which is using a different uh, API code for real credit cards. So after we have discussed what the problems are and uh, what type of solution DevOps can provide there, um, it is important to discuss the phases in which DevOps can be implemented. It is mostly implemented in three phases. This is automatic testing, um, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Automatic testing means the test cases are created for everything that is built and deployed. So when changing anything in the code, we can make sure that we are not uh, creating bugs backwards so that something that was running doesn't run anymore. Uh, continuous integration uh, means that um, we automate those test cases. So every time uh, we push a new update, tests are being run on 
our code to check if everything is running all right. Um, for this, mostly Jenkins is used. Um, this is a tool for automated testing. Uh, so it works by having different servers or instances of a server um, that run background, that run in the background um, and test our code while being pushed. So let's say a developer um, is done with a simple feature, then presses the, so he, pull, he pushes the code the code is picked up by Jenkins, all the tests are run. If everything is all right, it's being pushed to the, productions, uh, to the production. And if not, um, it is a failure and it cannot cause any production issues. Uh, the continuous delivery is actually the key point of DevOps. This is why it's so good. Um, it actually makes this step very easy by integrating everything together. So. A developer creates a simple feature, a small chunk of code, he pushes it, it's being tested and evaluated. If the test runs, then the new code is updated on the server and the feature is already available. So to make this entire process very easy, uh, we need a different category of tool sets um, to make this work. Um, first of all, we need version control. Uh, we need uh, continuous integration systems. Uh, we need systems for uh, building and testing our code. And we also need an artifact, artifact uh, repository, um, such as um, AWS S3, for example. Um, so we, need, we have, again, we can split this in two phases. We have a, a part where we are planning and writing the code. And then we have a part where we are releasing, releasing and deploying the code. So for planning and writing the code, the dev team is using some type of version control. Let's say it's Git. Um, different branches are set up. For example, it's a common practice to uh, have different branches for different features. When the branches get merged into the uh, master branch, the master branch actually activates Jenkins and the entire uh, deployment part. Uh, then when our code is deployed, we have artifacts of every, uh, of every version we have deployed. Um, here mostly systems like Puppeteer and Chef are used to uh, deliver on that. Uh, one um, key trend that is being adopted lately is this serverless infrastructure, especially with AWS, uh, which again makes the entire process a lot easier since it takes the problem of uh, actually managing, scaling and load balancing servers. So it basically comes down to just two parts, then developing the code and deploying it. The performance and the monitoring becomes again a lot easier. So to actually make all of this run, you need a team, right? Uh, the team besides the development team and the operation team also consists of the uh, software requirements and the quality assurance team. Depending on the size and the company and the philosophy, um, there can be different stakeholders involved in this, but those are the most common four types. So as you can already see, DevOps provides us with, us, with a lot of uh, benefits. Um, first of all, like in a waterfall scenario, you would have those development team developing for two weeks on a feature, then they push it out and then of course something doesn't work and yeah, then the entire problem starts again. Um, in this scenario, the developers push only tiny parts of features out and it is maintained and checked in this type of stream or pipeline. So errors are a lot less common um, and the efficiency is increased greatly. Um, Development and operations can work much tighter together, uh, developing features much faster and pushing those features out at a much higher rate. I hope this video helped you understand what DevOps is. Um, I hope you can use it in a presentation meeting or if you want to learn or if you want to start learning DevOps, uh, you can use some of this information. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. And if you find the video useful, uh, subscribe to the channel.